Word of 1812, Lesson 8, Peace and Pirates. This is our final lesson um, for this unit, and then there will be a review and your test. So if you remember, um, at this point, the United States had won the War of 1812. The British surrendered, but it was kind of anticlimactic. It just kind of happened. A peace treaty was signed over in um, Europe. And unfortunately, because things took so long to get and news took so long to travel, there were still battles happening before the war was actually over. So um, that's something to kind of keep in mind. Remember, the Battle of New Orleans actually took place two weeks after the War of 1812 was over. And then there was also um, that final battle at Fort Brower as well. All right, let's move on to our next lesson. The War of 1812 actually lasted almost three years, started Grandfather Lafitte. Both sides won battles here and there. The Americans felt dejected when the British burned Washington, D.C., but they felt jubilant or excited when they successfully defended Baltimore and New Orleans. <clears throat> Who won the War of 1812? asked J.P. Well, that's a tough question to answer, replied Grandfather Lafitte. There wasn't an outright winner. However, in many ways, by preventing the British from capturing several of our key ports, we felt we had won. Did the British think that they had won? Adele chimed in. I don't know about that. I am sure they felt that there was no clear winner. There was, there's no question that both sides were happy to stop fighting, and the Americans were relieved that the British did not gain any more land in our country. The peace treaty stated that both sides would have to accept the land agreements that existed before the war. That's good, but I still haven't heard anything about those pirates, urged JP. <clears throat> well, now you're going to, Grandfather Lafitte replied. You see, privateers and pirates played an important role in the War of 1812. What are privateers, and how are they different from pirates, asked Adele. Privateers were basically government-approved pirates. That means they were allowed and sometimes even encouraged to stop British merchant ships and take the cargo. Sometimes they were asked to seize the ships too. This was often the only way that the United States could get the supplies we needed. Do you mean to say that President Madison told privateers to steal stuff? asked J.P., amazed at the thought. Well, said Grandfather Lafitte, many things happen in times of war that would not ordinarily happen. Back then, there were, there were more privateers who owned ships than there were U.S. naval ships and sailors. For a big part of the war, the British had blockaded many of the ports. We had no way to get the supplies. He could not trade. We could not trade with other nations. We needed all the help we could get, so these privateers helped us by taking merchant ships and cargo that we desperately needed. By the end of the War of 1812, there were several hundred perfectly legal privateers. Were the privateers pirates before the war? Asked, asked JP. Some privateers were pirates, Grandfather Lafitte replied but others were young men who saw it as a way of making money. The most famous, or shall we say infamous, which means to be well known, pirate turned privateer from, was from the time where two brothers that were named Jean and Pierre Lafitte. Grandfather paused. Jean Lafitte was an excellent sailor and navigator. He helped spy on the British when they began their attack on New Orleans. Pierre was an expert smuggler of stolen goods. Because they had been pirates, they knew the swamps and the bayous of New Orleans very well. Jean, in particular, could find his way around the dense jungle-like swamps that confused most people. He often created secret waterways and canals that only he, had, he and his fellow pirates knew about. They could escape from anyone who tried to capture them. They hid their stolen goods in the secret places, too. 
They knew the area so well that General Andrew Jackson asked them to help him defend New Orleans. He offered them a full pardon if they agreed. They did, and many people believed that Andrew Jackson would not have won the Battle of New Orleans without the help of Jean Lafitte. Wait, did you say Jean Lafitte? asked Adele, staring right at her brother, whose name was Jean Pierre. Are we related to Jean Lafitte? Grasped, gasped JP. We are, it seems, descendants of his brother Pierre, explained Grandfather Lafitte. I will tell you a little more of your namesakes. They were quite fascinating characters. Now Grandfather had the children's attention. No one knows for certain where Jean and Pierre Lafitte were born, began Grandfather Lafitte. Some believe that they were born in France. Others that they were born in the French colony of Saint Dumont Dominique. Pierre was the older of the two, and they think he was probably born in 1770, whereas Jean was born around 1776, but no one knows. I guess they don't have birth certificates for pirates, J JP joked. Both of the brothers were well educated. In fact, Jean spoke at least four languages. The Lafittes were such good pirates that they had a warehouse in New Orleans filled with stolen goods. At one point, the brothers took over a whole island in Baratara Bay, Louisiana. They called the island the Temple. This island was like a settlement full of smugglers and pirates, and Jean Lafitte was their leader. The pirates sold their stolen goods right there on the island, and everyone went there to shop. The rich and the famous had even had even everyday farmers. That's so cool, exclaimed JP, listening, spellbound by his grandfather's story. You could say that, laughed Grandfather Lafitte. As the war moved into their hometown, they used their secret waterways in the swamps and the bayous to keep a close eye on the British. Despite Jean Lafitte's best efforts, the British eventually found his island. They seized his fleet of pirate ships and all the treasures that he and his brother had stored there. Did the British capture Jean-Pierre too? wondered JP. No, the brothers weren't on the island at the time, Grandfather Lafitte replied. Jean and Pierre Lafitte never thought of themselves as pirates. They considered themselves loyal patriots and businessmen. But it's been pretty well documented that, with the help of Jean Pierre and their army of buccaneers, Andrew Jackson knew every move that the British made. Thanks to them, he was able to outsmart and outgun the British. This is really the coolest story I've ever heard, exclaimed JP. I can't wait to tell my friends that my ancestors were pirates. I hope you will tell them all you have learned about the War of 1812, said Grandfather Lafitte. I know you are now both experts of the subject. I'm sure your teacher will be very impressed with your knowledge. Granddad, you never told us about your journal, prodded Adele. She had been curious about her grandfather's journal ever since she noticed it when they first arrived. Grandfather Lafitte opened up the leather journal Attached to the first page was a very old, crinkled poster. He carefully unfolded the yellowing pages. The Lafitte brothers advertised their stolen goods on posters and billboards in New Orleans. This is one of their posters. It, even, it may even have been held in the hands of Jean and Pierre Lafitte, said Grandfather Lafitte. J.P. and Adele looked at the poster. It read, Come one, come all, to John Lafitte's Bazaar, Saturday, for your delight. Clothing, gems, and knickknacks from the seven seas. The children read the poster several times. They both gent gently touched the delicate old document. Then Grandfather Lafitte folded it up and tucked it back inside the journal. Now I suggest you two scallywags skedaddle and take some time to think about all these things that you have learned. As I say, if we know something about the past, you can do a better job with the future. 
With that, JP and Adele hugged their grandfather goodbye and ran all the way home. The grassy fields in the front of their grandfather's farmhouse were now bathed in late afternoon sunshine. We are related to pirates, said, Adele, said JP in a loud whisper to his sister as they raced excitedly home. I know, whispered Adele. I just don't know if we should tell anyone. And that is the end of the story. So let's wrap up our last story with some comprehension questions. Number one, what skills did Jean and Pierre Lafitte have that made them successful pirates? Jean, Jean was an excellent sailor and navigator and Pierre was an excellent smuggler. Number two, why was it difficult for the United States to get supplies during the War of 1812? Because the British had blockaded many of their ports. Number three, what did General Jackson offer to do if Jean and Pierre agreed to help him defeat the British? He offered to pardon them for their crimes if they would agree to help him def to defeat the British. What knowledge did John and Pierre have that the British did not? They knew their way around the jungle-like swamplands around New Orleans and the British did not. How are private tears and pirates the same? Well, they're sailors on private ships is your main reason the way that they are the same. But how are they different? Privateers were hired to help the government. That is the difference. Pirates were not hired to help the government. My final thought for you is, is why do you think Adele wasn't sure that, that they should tell anyone about their pirate ancestors? What do you think? Would you want to tell if your ancestors were pirates? I'm not so sure. All right, well done.